about three days now. The incessant high-pitched creaking of the stressed floorboards from below. The deep, sickly groans from the stairs as they receive abuse. And the demonic whisperings of deranged ideology coming from the damned on the other side of my bedroom door. It whispers me to go to bed and sleep. So it could do Lord knows what to me. I will not give in to its request, but I have no idea what to do. Even during the day, I have to be careful. This monster can appear then as well, and always from the same source. The living room couch, thus the name, Couch Face. Yeah, it's silly sounding, but Couch Face is an unholy abomination from the dark, dusty depths of the crevice. A devil's angry possession of my mother, turning her into the beast that begs for my bedtime torpor. And at this very moment she moves, stalks within the shadows of the first floor of this house. I can hear her, the slow, steady creak, creak, creak. I know she's listening, waiting for me to make a sound, whether that's a snore or a signal that I'm awake. I know she grows impatient, she wants to get me, but I think she needs me to be asleep before she can. Here I sit, writing this on my phone, being as still and silent as possible. All of her steps, the wretched creaks and cranks, exploding through the silence, as if a mad demon was stamping the floor with its hooves. And worst of all, she's right under me. She is listening very closely. 3.47 a.m. Uh, my stomach's upset with me. I won't eat her cooking. I know I won't regret it. I've been eating those frozen burritos as of late. Black beans and rice make my tummy feel nice and my butthole burn. But when you eat too many, life starts to be a problem. And in my case, I have to fart. I can't risk it. And so my stomach moans and yearns, and my backside twists and turns. It desires to exhale its last breath. I feel my eyelids begging to sleep. Slowly, they try to fall. I'm so tired. I think I'm gonna go to a friend's house today. It's almost 4 a.m. right now. Just five or so more hours. I can make... No, I'm so dead. 3.51 a.m. I just got on my bed. I can't believe I let it slip. I farted. I can hear her ascending the steps. I can't stop shaking. I'm scared. She just made it to the top. She's walking to towards my door. I'm, I'm blinking my screen off. No light, no, no sound. 4.02 a.m. It's been about 10 minutes. I can hear her labored, ragged breathing outside my door. She won't go away. Go to bed. Go to bed. Go to bed. Her scratchy whispers pass the door and reverberate around the room. Her whispers turn into a deep guttural growl. Go to bed. I know you are awake. You need to sleep. Go to bed. 407. She's testing the doorknob, seeing if she can get in. It's locked. I made sure. She just realized. She's now violently wringing it like a wet cloth, trying to get the door open. She's screaming in a poor voice like a lunatic. Let me in! I just want to help you sleep! Unlock this door and let me in! Close your eyes and go to sleep! Her screams now accompanied by loud blastings of her fist against the door. I can hear it cracking. I might be dead soon. If anyone finds us on my phone, Please post us anywhere. I don't care. I need people to know that it was my mother who killed me. God, I'm so f Name redacted was found dead in his bed. Autopsy reports multiple lacerations to the neck and chest and what looked to be extreme blunt trauma to the face. Cause of death, mass blood loss. 
An eyewitness says they heard screaming and loud banging come from the house. They stepped outside to get a better listen. It stopped after a few minutes. I had my phone out ready to call the cops. And about a minute after the screaming stopped, a figure stepped out of the house. I turned my phone light on her and pointed at it. All I saw was this eyeless woman trenched in blood. She turned to me and said, go to bed and spread it off. That's when I called the cops. No one has seen this woman. For all we know, the eyewitness could have been seen. 